Welcome to the Photographer's Eye podcast, the podcast where we chat with photographers and pick their brain to see what they were thinking. On today's podcast, we get dangerous. We go down and dirty. We explore the dangerous world of urbex photography. On this episode, we'll be chatting with Max Bonsina from the Sony Collective. Now, urbex explorers and urbex photographers like Max are a special breed. It's really a dangerous type of photography, uh, going through train tunnels, climbing buildings, uh, you know, that maybe aren't structurally sound, uh, running away from guards and dogs. <laughs> so I think we kind of need like a little disclaimer on this episode that, um, you know, don't try this at home. Being an urban explorer and being an urbex photographer is a very special breed that I personally won't do, but enjoy experiencing through photographers like Max. Uh, so a, a word of warning, no trespassing, don't break the law, don't climb buildings that you're not supposed to be into, and definitely don't fool around near train tracks. And now let's talk to Max and see what he does. All right, folks, so Max is a, a video audio spaz. <laughs> 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 uh did you grow up as like a skate kid or a street kid i grew up in new york city i grew up in manhattan but i i didn't i didn't follow that personal ride until i got into i got into photography oh, okay, and then cool. i w i was fascinated by the whole skate graffiti culture yeah me too i was an 80 yeah. a late 80s skate kid so I was oh, like wow. Mark Gonzalez and Christian Hasoy and going under the Brooklyn Banks. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, Famous. Yeah. I've shot some people there. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. iconic New York. And then the, and then the Manhattan uh, Skate Park. Yeah. Manhattan Bridge Skate Park. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, Brooklyn, uh, the Brooklyn Banks, that was so cool. That was like so old school. I think they took them down, the Brooklyn Banks. I don't think yeah, they're I haven't there. Been there in, uh, I haven't been there in like, it's been a while. You're right. But they always, I feel like they always just climb over the fence that they put up. Oh, yeah, probably. Who does yeah. that? No. <laughs> Who the hell does that? These people. Yeah, it's private property. Kids. I know. Don't they read? <laughs> don't uh, they read? <laughs> you probably crazy. see a, a lot of uh, do not enter signs in your day. My gosh. I, I, can't, I guess I'm colorblind because they're mostly in red, I think. <laughs> now, if we get cut off, it's because I'm on the free Zoom and so are you because we're cheap. Uh, and it's only a 40 minute limit. So if for some reason we're talking and it cuts away, then yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get back right, together. So let's get started. Let's do it. <laughs> I lost you. It just says Bonchina now. My God, he's gone. Oh my God, Omar, I'm so sorry. Oh, so not sorry. a problem at all. I thought you had the cheaper Zoom, the five minute Zoom. <laughs> 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 it's like, sorry, you're cut. Yeah. Your rent's done. Yeah, that's Domo. You're hilarious, man. I hope we really get to shoot. You live in Jersey, right? I live in Jersey. I'm I'm like 20 minutes from the city, man. I think, hey, Max, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. I it's drove great. all the way to your show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're parked outside, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I want to. I don't want to miss it. Yeah. So we're starting, guys. We're here at Mac, uh, Max Bond on Instagram. And you got to check out his stuff, guys, because I'm so excited to talk to him. Your stuff, man. I, You know, I scrolled through your entire Instagram to the bottom. 2013, baby. Wow. And you wow. are what, you're one of the few. For, you know, when you scroll through mine, it's embarrassing after like, you know, when you get 2015. But you've been rocking it since like the beginning of your Instagram. You're you, you've like stayed on vision and task. So when did you well, start? Very kind. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think what it is is that um, I, I I know what I love, and although I might get sidetracked here and there, um, an invite from a friend, a fellow photographer, um, and I might depart from the usual theme. Maybe I'll hit a landscape, which I love landscapes, but I'm a New York City born and bred, so I, that is my thing. You know, urban photography and especially abandoned. I I seven years on and i'm still loving it and i'm That's still so hitting cool. it i was looking for like a picture of a taco or like your lunch <laughs> <laughs> like some grungy lunch oh my god uh, so no uh no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that yeah, I, I, yeah. that's not me 
So I, I love the, I, I don't know what drives us to this kind of photography. Like I, I myself personally love the grunge. I'm always looking for like peeling paint. Mm -hmm. And even when I started my YouTube channel, those the first pictures I started sharing was stuff like that, like messed up places and grunge. Like what drives us or what drives you to like find these places? What, where's the interest? I think it's threefold. I think first of all, uh, my day job, I'm, I teach history. So I think I'm always fascinated by the questions that are that come from exploring the past. Why am I here? What is this place? What was the original intent of this location, this edifice? Um, who passed through these hallways? And so on. Uh, whether it's New York City, whether it's Europe, whether whatever I might be. Um, two, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting to do something that I hate to say it can be a bit perilous or. Yeah, the, risky. Get the adrenaline rush. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is a great adrenaline rush. Um, huge adrenaline rush, especially some of the places I've been to. Um, and and the third thing, I think it just it builds a beautiful story, especially as I've been able to transition with uh, creating stories, creating a model, and in, in, including a model in these in these you know dark and and dilapidated peeling paint, as you said. Uh, environments and then you add this beautiful striking model and it's such a contrast you know yeah yeah it's just position the beauty and the and, and and the ugly so to speak and and who are these models that are like yeah we're not going in there <laughs> <laughs> right Screw yeah. you man yeah i know um thankfully i because as you said that my feet is consistent i think they know yeah they know what I'm they're getting taking, into yeah, yeah yeah you're not we're not we're not going to uh you know a five-star restaurant to take some shots of champagne glasses so you just have not, to climb through this broken window <laughs> i mean, this is actually a conversation i've had i'm like well the opening is kind of you have to kind of crash through the broken window i literally said that so Right away, thankfully. Um, no, yeah, yeah it's definitely, definitely a specific model, uh, you know, skills there. Don't you think that that this this like subsection of subfield of photography? Don't you think it's more popular than ever? Yeah, man, like totally in a good way, and also uh, bad for the people who aren't doing it right. These some of these places shouldn't be shared. Like you shouldn't really, yeah. you know, is yeah, there yeah. like a code? with the urbex community yeah. that you kind of share but you don't want to like tag on instagram the location yeah i couldn't agree more there's there's a huge thing there's a huge community about like not you know nothing but footsteps left behind and there's a whole battle between the people who tag graffiti in these uh, places yeah. which 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 i'm i'm uh, i'm half and half on that i mean i do love a clean place but I, I don't mind if it's well done the street art aspects um i have collaborated with some street artists in, in some of better locations legit street artists who have galleries and things like that yeah i hate when i walk into a beautiful church and somebody like you can see the, the stained glasses somebody throw a rock i'm like why like yeah why would you that's, do that? uh, on that's any a... on any level how is that permissible in your brain like it's I, those damn kids yeah yeah it really is like i, I mean i don't think an 80 year old man is doing that um, it's just, I don't get it. If you want to break stuff, I don't know, break your room. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. Why would you do that? So like this stunning I know, but it's, I, we, we, I remember, uh, I grew up in Hoboken and I don't know if you've ever been to Hoboken, New Jersey, but there's Erie Lackawanna. It's kind of like the green ferry station. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when Famous. we were kids, yeah, we were like 13. There was such an adrenaline rush to go in there because it, you couldn't get in there. So we walked down this little pier and, you know, there was this little door to break into. We, like, you know, squeeze into this other place and everything was abandoned from like early 80s or like late 70s. The paperwork was everywhere. It's like wow. they just left it. I wish I could even go have back a camera. I was just a skate kid and we used to love mm -hmm. sneaking around. And there's it's an that. Offensor. Yeah, it's like exactly. Goonies or Stand By Me. It's like that adventure of like discovering this secret location which might not be so secret to, you know, but you might think it is, especially when you're 13, you're like this would be our clubhouse. And you yeah, know, it's yeah. like. But I was gonna bring it back to you because there's, that's me being a kid. I wouldn't do that today. So I'm living through the urbex photographers that are going to these places that are crawling through windows. Like you're sharing these to us, to me, beautiful places, you know? You froze, he's gone. Max. 
Max. Yeah, yeah. You froze. You froze. Hmm. Maybe it's the UFOs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was saying that I had a crazy experience just last week, and I've been going to Buffalo a lot. I've met a lot of uh, great people. I became really good friends with um, a local photographer from Buffalo. We've become like friends. Like I invite him to my house. I've had uh, dinner with his family. And I go there often, even though it's a seven-hour drive, because there's so much abandonment there. And we had the craziest story, just like what you talk about. I found an abandoned train, which is pretty, pretty damn unique. You don't find abandoned trains no. everywhere. And, and we were there. I had a wonderful model, two photographers, two explorers. I had props. I had all the stuff that I brought. I had all these visions. And the, literally 30 seconds after we get there, like four 13-year-old, 14-year-old kids start uh. walking down the tracks. It's on a a uh, secured location uh, train company owns it and there's commercial trains all around it's like 12 15 tracks and there's this huge abandoned train in the middle different different train cars but all abandoned and these kids start getting on they start climbing the roof throwing stuff off the yeah. roof like and they and like why would you do that and of course the security guard dude comes with his SUV and starts yelling at them. They start throwing stuff at them. I'm like, well, how dumb are you? Like, why do you got to throw stuff at the security guard? Do you and ever just... get mistaken for that? You know, breaking into places and walking out of places. You ever stop by security guards and like, you, yeah, well, you're kind of the troublemakers, you know? Right. Well, that's exactly. We actually were here a month earlier and we just ducked out and waited for the security guards and kids to leave. But a month earlier, we're in the same spot. And my friend was on the top of the roof. I was taking some amazing photos of him. And the, the, the dude rolled up in his SUV, and he could have been nicer because we were just very polite. We're like, yeah. hey, sorry, sorry, sir. My my local friend still said, hey, I'm sorry. We were just taking some photographs. He was could have been nicer. He's like, have a nice day, but oh, you got to okay. go. Oh, so <laughs> a lot. <laughs> See, actually, why don't you give some, uh, like, a few catch lines that you use because how, how many, how often, what percent do you think somebody pulls up on you? Uh, I, I'm, that's a great, Omar, you're a, you're a wise man. Um, yes. First of all, there's some great catch lines that I will pass on to you and your, uh, the viewers. Um, I've learned being nice is a life lesson even in trespassing. I swear. How many times you actually, if unfortunately you do get found out, you just speak to the gentleman or the, or the lady, most often it's a gentleman, yeah. and say, hey, I'm so sorry. We were just taking some photographs. You know, And they see that you're speaking to them politely you don't have a gun or or yeah, spray no pen, drugs spray yeah, yeah yeah right there's no drugs none of that and most times out of not, most times they'll say oh no problem you guys gotta go though and nothing they don't call the cops they don't they don't threaten you nothing it's just like that so yeah that's cool that just, is that's a great advice just be honest you be know honest, just like don't escalate person. anything yeah yeah right there's always that 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 uh that rule of photographers is apologize after, you know, so it, so a lot of people uh, don't know if you need a permit to shoot in a certain place in New York. You know what? Just shoot really quick and get out. And if someone comes, you just apologize later. That's what you apologize later as opposed for asking for permission because they won't let you go in anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And you definitely know that because you do so much events and so many, so many family and, um, you know, events, whether it's weddings or bar mitzvahs, right, Omar? Yeah. yeah. And sometimes don't you shoot in a location that, you you're supposed to have a permit exactly so we usually just say hey we're just trying stuff out there they right exactly what you said max be polite and and see i'm luckier because i got i got teens i got kids i got moms with me so it diffuses everything yeah. but you with your hood <laughs> on and you're dressed in black right <laughs> right yeah it's like oh this guy's up to no good no but then you end up actually speaking politely and i'm like whoa uh, this is not a danger, and probably in their eyes, you know, I never thought about it, Omar. But they're probably thinking, "Look, I don't want to get into a fight today. I don't yeah. want to get into an altercation." They're like, "Oh, this dude is being really nice. That's great." Do they um, do they ever let you stay, or or you always I, wrap it I, up? I, I always wrap it up, except for one strange time in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we're in an abandoned school, and again, we heard people working trying to, I guess, refurbish it, even though the place is beyond refurbishment. And the, another local photographer was like, I'm going to go talk to him. And he was proactive. He went down there. And the owner said, come on down. And we went to his, like, work trailer. He was like, hey, here, have a piece of paper. 
just sign a sheet in case, you know, brick falls on you won't sue me and you can say all you want. And I was like, what? Wow. Amazing. Wow. I was like, sign me up. So we stayed there. We shot. We didn't, we felt like, you know, because then, you know, unfortunately talking about process that you mentioned that earlier when we were communicating via text, you know, you don't want to interrupt the creative flow. You don't want to worry about, you know, paranoid. Oh, is that a noise? Is that somebody coming? Am I going to yeah. get kicked out? And when you have that sense of feeling of like, oh, wow, I'm allowed to be here. Oh, it changes fully, everything, I bet. I can fully zone in. Well, on that's called a studio, things. Max. It's called a studio. <laughs> 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 Not some church. You know? <laughs> yes, yeah. and yes. And, and there's some place, I've been to a place in Pennsylvania, which was an abandoned school, which was also, you played a little bit of cash beforehand, but it was a studio. It turned into a studio. Oh, wow. Where, where, where my type of photographers go there often, and for a nominal fee, you, you have the place yourself and even have electricity. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I've been in Europe where similar things like that, you kind of like, okay to shoot there, even though it's abandoned. Oh, I think cool. actually they should do more of that. Well, I had a, I had like a little uh, studio for a while in Patterson, New Jersey. There's a, an old, you know, the red brick kind of Brooklyn been factory, the art factory. Yeah. You've been to it? Yeah, of yeah. course. Come on. Yeah, Omar, right. I'm checking so in you on know, you. let me tell everyone else then. So there's a, <laughs> it was like an old shipping rope factory that yes. the owners converted into a space for to create for videographers, people making music videos. I had a little photography studio in there and I did portrait shoots. But it's funny, and I will talk to you about this, you would understand the pain. The owners didn't understand keeping things the way they were. So yes. for, for example, you know, paint, man, takes like years to curl up and get that like crackle on it. And then it starts to curl with age. It's magic. They, yeah, it's magic. So they had like a, a commercial shoot coming up. They painted one of the doors fresh and they started um, floors that were super old and grungy and matte finish. They sanded them all down and they uh, glazed them with like polyurethane. It was like, oh, man. Listen to me. I'm going to put into my car GPS Patterson factory. I'm going there right now. I'm going to yell at him. No way. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I couldn't agree with you more. It's like, why would you, why would you, yeah. I mean, if you want a new studio, you go to a new studio, you have something unique there. You have a piece of, of history of Americana save it maybe save you know it. obviously clean it up you don't want you know roaches or mice you know but but save the that old feel yeah so uh let's go through a little pre-planning like what goes through your mind as the photo photographer so a lot of stuff on your instagram i love seem to be conceptual planned shoots like where does that start come from and how does it go from the beginning of your feeling to your plan to click well, first of all, my brain definitely thinks a bit differently, uh, thankfully. I think I come up with some crazy ideas, uh, which maybe are influenced by maybe uh, movies or music or whatever kind of experiences, books. Um, but also, back to my day job, as a teacher, uh, I need to plan to be successful. And therefore, I, I, I bring that to, to shooting. I always plan ahead. Um, I scout out images of the location I'm going using the internet, and then once I, you know, you, you know, you mentioned storyboarding when we were texting earlier and speaking earlier. You know, I kind of map out those images. I will do this shoot. I will do this pose. I will do this outfit, and, and that is the pre-shoot. Um, and also check like weather. Do yeah, you want? Yeah. You don't want uh, a, a cloudless, sunny sky. I look for scattered clouds. Cool. Uh, so when you go out with a model, um, do you have like a shot already planned? Or yes. Or are you going, you you already have the idea. Like the yeah, Santa Claus definitely. shot I love. The Santa Claus yeah. with the, like, that was already, obviously you had to bring a Santa Claus suit, but you had that shot in mind or that formed itself at the location, the chair wanna, with the. I want to I wanna quote my wife right now. What did you order on Amazon today? <laughs> I mean, it's Santa Claus outfits. I I ordered a Soviet Cold War gas mask. I'm the things I'm ordering. I ordered a real like lightsaber. I mean, I saw it's that crazy. shot. That was cool. I showed my son. Yeah, yeah, because he's into Star Wars. I'm like, look at the cool yeah. this guy is. Oh, that thing! It makes noises when you turn it on. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, so what I do is I just come up with some ideas. Obviously, you know, inspired by other photographers or films or cultural items, and then I I buy it. 
I, I, I have a, a great group of models that I really uh, love that I, I know I can, you know, this one can do this perfectly. This one is more geared for that. That's and cool. then I have I have like two, three tremendous friends that I've met through photography, met through Instagram of all things, and have become really tight friends. And we talk shop. We were in a text. We're like, hey, Jason, what do you think of this? And he was like, no, let's do this. And and we have like, I really like, we're basically one, two really tight friends that we talk shop. That's cool, and, man. And, See, and, I think that's... And, then, and then we kind of come up with the process together. I think uh, that's, and it, that, that Santa Claus shoot, was one of them i do it every year the first one took three of us to do it it wouldn't have been able there was a one with balls did you see that one like it was even, male even balls further. no <laughs> <laughs> no like you know like what kind you know, of like shoot it, was this max I know. <laughs> <laughs> not that guy oh, no okay. it was like you know like mcdonald's playhouse has those little colorful balls oh like yeah yeah the, the ball yeah yeah those rubber, Those. the balls, the ball right. uh, pit. It's called a ball pit. Yeah, yeah. Ball pit. That's what it is. <laughs> so, I'm going to so, put it on the screen. Ball pit. <laughs> yes. I love that. Uh, so with this one abandoned hospital uh, in New York City has, for some reason, uh, there's a ball. These, color, these ball pit balls are throughout the hallways. So we thought of throwing them. I'm throwing them to the camera. And that took three people. One to shoot. Actually, we put it on tripod. Tripod, I was in the outfit, and both uh, my friend uh, Jesse and Jason threw the balls to wow. create more effect. And then we had the, 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 the camera on um, That's cool. burst mode. And we changed. I changed the ball color in uh, post. Uh, I just made them, I think, just red and green. For, That's you know, for Christmas. Christmas stuff. Right. But that was the kind of idea we talked shop beforehand. And then we did that. And then the next year with the uh, cigarette and, and bottle of liquor, uh, that was, yeah, that was me just thinking of an of a dystopian Santa. You know, I'm tired. I'm not doing this no more. I just want to kick cool. back. That would have been high, good for this drunk. year, man. <laughs> that would have been yeah, good for right? this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, oh, and then last year I did the burning the, 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 the letters. I'm, I can't do the letters anymore. I threw the burning That was letters. cool. I saw that. Yeah. That was cool. So, so, so I think this, an excellent thing you brought up is yes. – you're not doing this stuff alone. You know, I think a lot of us pick up photography and go out with our camera alone. We're doing street photography alone. And look at the images you're able to capture because you have like a team and you're feeding. Are you, do you like feed off other people and you get ideas and. Uh, you know, uh, the first can, uh, the first trip I went to, to Acadia, Maine in 2017, um, 10 strangers in Maine, a playlist that was completely opposite what I'm used to shooting, but damn the camaraderie between Anthony and Andrew, we just like the it's the energy, the, the the process, the creative flow between yeah. three heads, and and three different styles of shooting. Omar, three different lens lenses, three different focal lengths, three different camera. Like we're able to do stuff and 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 come up with cool concepts using our own you know creative flow. That's and cool. I, I learned that early on, even when I was started shooting here in New York, just like there's nothing wrong with shooting with others. I think people are scared of that. I think, I think so. oh, I want the shot. You know, I, yeah. I want all the credit. It's not about that. It's think of the greater good. You're going to create something on your own and you can edit it your way anyway. You're going to have different poses anyway. I always go with others. You know, people that obviously I'm, I know, like I wouldn't say, you know, open a, you know, open up a Facebook post. Hey, he wants to join me. No, I, I think it's just about people you're good with, you're comfortable with, and are creative. Once you have that core, whether it's one person, two people, or another model you're tight with and you're, you shot with her many times, that's how I think you get some amazing shots. Obviously, you can go solo with some of these abandoned locations and do your own thing, but I, I'm all about the group thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know what happens sometimes with uh, doing a group thing incorrectly? Sometimes sometimes people go to a, a like a photo walk or something where there's a group and they don't That's, do what yeah. you said, like ha hooking up with people you know. And then it ends up just you end up meeting great people, but you don't have that like photography collab because you're not really shooting, you know? Yeah, Insta meets are like that. Like I end up, Insta meets to me are become our our social thing. Like I meet great people. Exactly. I make new friends. I get new connections and that. But shooting wise, it's like there's too no, many voices. It's like yeah. Rrr, rrr. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think a lot of us just go out and try to see what we get, and it's sometimes you know you just 
go to the same spot like 10 times and you know then see what you get you know oh my you brought up two great things first of all i love shooting i always get better shots the second time i'm at a place mm. because you become more comfortable you see things in post when you're editing you're like wait a minute i could have maybe uh knelt down yeah. i could have made shots through the window instead of in front of the window you see things in post as you're editing or different ideas reach you that you totally. might have done in other shoots um and and also planning wise because if the things don't work out at least you have some thoughts already in in in, in your head and and i think that's why it's also good to kind of plan ahead all right so let's talk a little bit about where you've been i mean let's show off a little bit here but i saw i saw <laughs> what is your uh, ultimate, like where your heart was racing and you were just so excited to be there. And uh, give us that one first. Like, what's your Disneyland right. of Urbex? I mean, you uh, can't give locations or GPS coordinates. <laughs> All right. So, as far as uh, most uh, most terrifying yet slash thrilling is the um, the underground systems of the major cities throughout the world. Because when you're dealing with an onrushing train, uh, that's not a joke. And I don't recommend anybody doing that uh, because you're playing with your life. Um, and But if people happen to shoot that, uh, the, 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 it's intensity times a million. Um, and it's, it's a whole subculture. There's within the urbex community, there's a whole people that are just tunnel rats that just shoot tunnels. Um, and subways, and that is in a in a genre of its own, in a in a subset of its own, and it takes a certain type of person. It's not a joke. It's not. No, a I'm not going to go. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> but, that's why I love it, what you do. Yeah. You know, what are the uh, what are the urbex hours when they clock in? What is it like? Two a.m., <laughs> three a.m. Yeah, the... I mean, yeah, yeah. You want to go? You want to go? You want to go later at night so that you know it's not uh, less people, less less everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. That's crazy. Um, and then, so it, as far as uh, safety in the underground, what about building wise? I seem to like the very abandoned, uh, like you have, like abandoned hospital, abandoned school, abandoned abandoned old churches. Yeah, those are my fave as far as buildings go. I think churches and schools, uh, hospitals, yeah, I think they've got to be top three and I think they're most common too. It's just uh, schools, you know, just the classrooms are just so trippy. You have these desks yeah, and you have yeah. chalkboards and you're like, you know, you know, I start, I always write on the chalkboard some, some dumb, you know, like, uh, I'll write the aim of the lesson or something. Bart uh, Simpson. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I was in a school in Philly. This is amazing. And somebody actually wrote on the chalkboard, um, I will not write graffiti i will not write graffiti. They, wrote it, they wrote it like a hundred times that's it was amazing. amazing yeah yeah that's so, great um so that schools are amazing i've been lucky enough to be some swimming pools recently uh with water inside it which was kind of weird there were some frogs and in living inside it which oh is that's eerie. crazy yeah my friend actually took off his shoes and walked in there which is trippy uh um churches are stunning because you know you take the stained glass then usually the neo-gothic architecture that can be astounding um awesome. and uh hospitals yeah hospitals can be amazing er um oh, man. Do you wear anything like uh, i mean some of these places must have asbestos and stuff are you protect yourself or what yes i do i always wear like the uh before covid i used to wear the n95 mask before it was stylish. oh good because yeah that's yeah. another thing to tell people is if you're going Big to these time. places yeah yeah as asbestos you don't want to mess with that uh hopefully um healthy but uh yeah that stuff can kill you so always wear especially the hospitals the hospitals have a lot of that i find um that asbestos dust what happens like to that. these places like why are they still why are there, why is there uh, furniture in there why is there like i mean some of them look like you could still have a class <laughs> the desk yeah are... i mean uh, for the most part i've noticed i've done the research most part is the uh the the um cost of demolishing is too much so oh. like for example there's a massive abandoned hospital complex out in long island um Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> that well trust me you go there on a weekend it's like you'll see groups of people walking oh, about wow. it. I, ne okay. I never seen anything like it i was there a few weeks back i swear to you grandma mom and daughter oh, and the dog it was like i was like where, where am i uh just walking around <laughs> it was nuts uh, but they it's just an affluent community but they have like honestly maybe 30 20 30 buildings 
to demolish that. I think it cost yeah, the town too much. And everything. Yeah. yeah. All right. I want to talk about two things real quick. Number sure, sure. one is your work is being displayed. Like you're actually, you know, oh, you dropped me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to ask about you, you know, your two things, Sony and exhibiting your work. So let's start with uh, exhibiting your work. How has that been? And I know you show, uh, you shoot with the Sony a7R 3 which has a lot of megapixels. So how big do you blow up your work? How have you displayed it? Who's displaying it? And how has that been, like showing your work? How do you feel about that? Well, I love the R3. Uh, I don't know about you, Omar. You should shooting with the are you what are you shooting with i shoot with the sony a7 III for events Omar? but for myself i use hello right hello yes i'm ready oh okay <laughs> <laughs> you broke up for a little bit i shoot with the sony a7 III and then um i just came off canon like i've been my canon 5d mark IV has been sitting and uh i use fujifilm when i go out for myself and shooting if you want to blow up your work and you want to do gallery type high definition you know crisp uh, that's the, that's why I love the R3. Although um, I would like to, I, I was I was gonna hit the A7S2, but I don't know. I love the R3. I love that uh, because of the megapixels and it's just an amazing camera. So I've had galleries. Thankfully, I'm very fortunate. I've had galleries in Brooklyn, Manhattan, Miami, um, and um, Philly. So, so I've blown up a, a lot of my images. I, my largest image is about. I don't know, about five feet by three feet, and it's hanging right now in my home. Oh, that's um, cool. And it's from the Paris uh, tunnels. It's a pretty sick shot. You got um, to send that to me so we can put it Yeah, in. I will. I'll show it to, I'll show it to you on, uh, on the feed. Speaking of that, I've, I've got a new project with a, the, my friend's buddies. We're going to do a book. We just got a, our first deadline. We're going to do an Urbex book together, the, the four of us. Oh, so that's, that's cool. That's, yeah, I'm really, I mean, that's something that I can always, you know, hang my hat on 20, 30 years from now. Um, so we're working on that 50 images. What's the format? Is it like soft cover table book kind of thing or yep. hard cover? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard. I think I, it's definitely a uh, coffee table format. I believe it's a uh, hard cover. I, I got to check the notes. Um, but 50 images is a lot. So I'm really excited uh, about that. It's hard to think of 50 yeah. images. Like Damn, the top 50. Yeah. Especially um, all, so the, wife, all the years, right? Yeah. So my wife and I is like, she's helped me. So she's all awesome that i hope i answered your question i'm not yeah, sure yeah totally man i love it i love it man and uh when that book comes out definitely tell us so we can link it up and yeah hopefully she said spring release so let's hope knock on wood that you know with all these crazy times of covid uh i hope that the uh the, the thing keeps keeps rolling along uh so max this has been incredible man thank you so much for like opening the curtain a little bit to places we'll never go <laughs> <laughs> so mysterious. I love that. Yes. Yeah, your work is beautiful, man. Keep doing what you're doing before you get too old to climb through the windows. And uh, I just you got that right. I just think it's great that you're incorporating Urbex also with like message and you're bringing models in and doing art. And uh, that's cool. You're inspiring a bunch of us. So thanks, man. I hope so. I hope so. And uh, and I, I hope we can uh, we can shoot together because I love learning from everybody else. I think that's that's a that's a big tip is uh collab you know baby. collab baby that's it that's it all right max man take care all right sounds good omar peace peace what i just want to go trespass now don't you want to go trespass <laughs> that was a great conversation with max and my takeaway from this episode was really again just like the ben canaric uh episode that collab and working with others is important Again, I am a solo photographer. I do most things alone. I edit alone. I shoot alone. And um, Max has a group that he's with that he can bounce ideas off of. And I think more of us need to maybe connect with others that are like-minded, but also not like-minded so that you can see things in a new way. And um, I know I won't be going crawling through any tunnels or going down into the subway but I love seeing these photographs because this whole world is open to us. All right, see you guys next time.